In this Singapore travel vlog, we fly from Greece to Singapore and explore what to do in 48 hours in this wonderful city. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And we're coming to you from Singapore. There's going to be plenty of sightseeing, shopping and plenty of delicious hawker street food. This looks amazing. Keep watching to find out more. Today we're flying from Athens to Singapore with Scoot Airlines. So we're taking the cheapest form of transport to get there, which is the airport bus. It was 550 euro per person. We've just arrived at Athens Airport. It was a really smooth trip on the bus. Hopefully the check-in process will be pretty smooth. Well, check-in's open. It actually opened two and a half hours before our flight, not three hours. We got here not too long after the two and a half hour mark and it was packed. So I guess we're a little bit out of practice with flying. The big recommendation is to get here before the gates open just to get your spot in the queue. You know those nightmares where you're going from one room to the other and you never seem to reach your destination? That's what it feels like in Athens airport. We went through various different passport controls and security checks and then there were long, long walkways and I never thought we were going to find our gate but we're eventually here. Now our flight was due to depart pretty much now but there's a huge lineup still so I think Scoot's a little bit behind which I guess is good but yeah it's been pretty frantic. It took an hour and a half to get our boarding passes and it's just been frantic after that. After waiting around for the best part of four hours, including a one hour delay in departure time, we finally got on board for our 11 hour flight to Singapore. It was the longest flight we'd been on for nearly three years and some people fared better than others on this trip. Well, it's times like these where it pays to be a bit more compact and to be able to sleep anywhere because I feel very refreshed and I think I got a pretty good night's sleep. Scoot Airlines are unbeatable when it comes to cheap flights. We were able to find tickets for 295 euro each. We're halfway through customs. It's pretty quiet today and we got through pretty quickly. So I'm looking forward to getting into Singapore. The entry process was pretty straightforward. So we'd already done our digital arrival card before we entered Singapore. So we were able to go into the line for those people that had done that pre-entry form and just show our passport, get our photo taken, show our thumbs and away we went. So we're in the train station now going to Singapore. You can tap on and tap off with just your bank card or your credit card, so that's really easy. Otherwise there's a tourist pass or you can get an easy linked card, which is like a travel card. Singapore has one of the best mass transit systems in the world with a fast and high frequency service. It made it very easy to explore Singapore city. One of the must-do activities in Singapore is to visit one of the many Hawker Street food centres in the city. The largest Hawker Centre is the Chinatown Complex, with over 200 Hawker stalls to choose from, serving mainly Chinese-inspired dishes. If you're after Indian street food, check out the Tekka Centre in the Little India District. If you're after a bit of everything, then we also recommend the Maxwell Centre for a great authentic Hawker Market experience. We'll review each of these hawker markets and more in our next Singapore vlog. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification button to make sure you don't miss it. After our red eye flight, the first thing we did was get to the nearest hawker centre for some tasty Singapore food. We're starting our day with breakfast in Singapore at the old airport centre. <laughs> This centre is actually right next to the old airport road food centre. We did come to this centre by mistake, however, one side of the food and we turned left a little bit too soon and here we are. And this is a hawker centre, a food court. It's got some beautiful traditional Singaporean dishes. So nasi lemak is a dish that is very popular for breakfast in Singapore and it's now also eaten for lunch and dinner as well. It's a dish that has rice that's been cooked with coconut cream. It's got some fried anchovies which are called ikan bilis. It's got peanuts, it's got egg, we've got a beautiful sambal 
and we've also got some pieces of cucumber. Now your nasty little mac can also include some protein so you could upgrade to have a set with chicken or fish. We chose the fish so altogether this was $3.50 Singaporean dollars. This looks amazing. Let's try and get a little bit of everything. Yeah, so you can really taste that coconut, that's really beautiful. Balances out the spiciness of the sambal. You've got the crunchiness and the saltiness of the anchovies. Peanuts give it a little bit of crunch and that nutty flavour which is really nice. And then the egg, so it's a really balanced dish. Lots of flavour, lots of different textures as well, which I love. Yeah, so this is a beautiful start to our day. Are you liking the fish? Yeah, it's nice. It's pretty easy to eat. You can hold it in your hands and just it right away. The prawn hockey and me is another must try dish in Singapore. We opted for the soup version and it was a tantalising blend of noodles in a savoury broth with juicy prawns, fish cakes, bean sprouts and green onions. The Kalang Estate Market is a little bit of a smaller hawker centre, however it's got some really affordable prices. We saw dishes that were more than four Singaporean dollars, which is really cheap. And there are a couple of vegetarian stores here as well, so that's a little bit different that we've found from other market stores. I just used the public toilets here, they were free to use. One interesting thing about them was that they had both the Western and the Scott style toilets. So you could choose what one you wanted and they had a picture on the doors to let you know which one was which. After a late breakfast, it was time to jump straight to dessert. One of my favourite fruits is mango, so I was really excited to have some mango ice kacang in Singapore. Ice kacang is just one of the typical Singaporean desserts that you must try when in Singapore. The ice is made in an ice machine to make it really light and fluffy. And then you've got various types of syrups drizzled over the top. You've got some different types of jellies. And this has got some red beans, some rye cheese, and then the mango puree all over the top. So it looks spectacular. I love the height that they get on these desserts. Mm. Uh, that ice just cools you down instantly. It's quite a steamy hot day here in Singapore. And so having a dessert like this really hits the spot. All the syrups make it really nice and sweet. And I love the texture of the jelly in there as well. It just kind of just goes all the way through your body. It's so cooling. And red bean as a dessert is something that's very popular in Asian dishes, but in other areas you don't see red bean used as a sweet dish. So I find that really interesting. The red bean gives it another little texture contrast as well. So what I find really interesting about Asian food is that they really do work a lot with the texture and the contrast of the different textures. This is a beautiful dessert, very refreshing, very tasty and it was only $3.20. If you want to go shopping in Singapore, look no further than the Mustafa Centre. Mustafa Centre is a really interesting place to visit in Singapore. It's got everything you could ever want. There are multiple levels with different things on each level. So there's an electronics level, there's a whole level dedicated to gold jewellery, uh, there's even a grocery shopping level. You name it, they've got it. Another cool thing is that with Mustafa Centre, they offer the GST refund for tourists. You can get a 10% refund if you're flying out of Changi Airport. And that's eligible for two months after you make the purchase. And it's open 24 hours. So we're currently at the Mustafa Centre and we're testing out a lapel mic. So this is 65 Singaporean dollars. And hopefully it works. We've got a dongle in, so fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
John's testing at one, two, three. Yeah, so there's only one lapel mic and there's two of us, so I don't know if that's going to work with him. John's, How's it going? John's testing one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can I hear myself? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to find out very soon. Another popular shopping destination for both locals and tourists is the Bugais town area, home to the Bugais Plus Mall and the Bugais Street Market. You will find some of the most affordable souvenirs, shoes, clothes and accessories on Bugais Street. Today we're going to the IMM outlet market. It's the biggest outlet market in all of Singapore. Hopefully I find a bargain for my shoes. Now I've been wearing the same shoes for three years and they're not going to last too much longer. You can come back for me when you finish your shopping. No trip to Singapore is complete without a visit to Marina Bay. For a great nightlife experience in Singapore, come to the Riverside Walk. There's a light show that goes from the Marina Bay Sands and it's just a great atmosphere here. Another tip is to find a sky bar for unbeatable views of the Singapore skyline. We hope you enjoyed our Singapore travel guide. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Have you visited Singapore before? What activities would you recommend when visiting the city? Let us know in the comments. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.